In 2011, Daniel Shapiro, Julie Fisher, and their three daughters moved from Washington, D.C. to Herzliya. Daniel Shapiro had been appointed by President Obama to serve as the United States Ambassador to Israel. It was a defining moment in Dan and Julie's journey together. However, for those who knew them well, it was the only natural progression of a lifelong commitment to be true to their Jewish values. Dan, Julie, and I met at Olin Seng Ruby Union Institute Camp, Asrui, in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, one of the reformed Jewish summer camps throughout the country. Early on, there was something special about Dan and Julie, that a quality that they each possessed, a gift, if you will, to make everyone who they met with feel special, as though that person was the most important person in Dan and Julie's lives at that moment, at that time. And it seemed like Dan was on the radio or on television all the time, no matter what was happening, whether it was Iran negotiations, or whether there had been a terror attack, or whether it was about something happening in another part of the world that the Israelis wanted to explain from an American perspective. Dan was there, speaking his fluent Hebrew directly to the people. As the U.S. ambassador, Daniel Shapiro won praise for his unprecedented outreach to Israelis and for his skilled management of the U.S.-Israel relationship during a period of notable bilateral tensions and regional instability. And it wasn't just about Dan being ambassador, it was about what Julie was doing in a non-traditional way. She wasn't that traditional spouse of an ambassador that would just host the parties and connect with others in that way. She took it upon herself to get involved in the community in Israel, to learn about the people, learn about the social justice issues, things that were important to her. When Julie Fisher became aware of the humanitarian crisis in Israel's asylum-seeking population, she established the Consortium for Israel and the Asylum Seekers, which has become one of the leading voices on the issue. It's not an easy job that she has created for herself. The issue of dealing with asylum seekers in Israel, I think, Unfortunately, some can view it as a political issue. Julie has worked to make sure that this is a humanitarian issue. This idea of we were all once refugees, I think is something that Julie has internalized. And helping those in need, helping the stranger in our midst, is one of the ways Julie is really living um, her values. They cared for people, they were compassionate, and in a way they lived out their dream by moving to Israel. But it didn't go to their heads. They really understood that it was about making the personal connections with the citizens of the state of Israel. Please welcome back the president of the Union for Reform Judaism, Rabbi Rick Jacobs, and our honorees, Ambassador Daniel Shapiro and Julie Fisher. In Jewish life, we often do things in pairs. Two Shabbat candles, two chalot on our Shabbos table. Traditionally, we even study in pairs known as chavruta. Each half of the pair serves to support, to strengthen, and lovingly challenge the other to ever greater achievements. Ambassador Dan Shapiro and Julie Fisher are the ultimate chavruta. Widely acclaimed in both Israel and the U.S. as one of the finest U.S. ambassadors to Israel in history over the past seven years during some very tense times, including while negotiating the Kotel Agreement with the Israeli government, I sought and received Dan's sage counsel regularly. And Julie, an admired and beloved educator, well before Dan became ambassador, has inspired all of us who heed our tradition's imperative to stand up for the asylum seekers from Sudan and Eritrea, fleeing violence and genocide, whose safe place in Israel is regularly challenged. Dan and Julie are leaving indelible marks on the Jewish community, the Israeli community, and the American-Israel relationship. And in so doing, they are showing us all what it is to live with purpose, with heart, and with Jewish soul. We are proud to award Julie Fisher and Dad Shapiro the Alexander M. Schindler Award for service to world Jewry.
Let me start with gratitude. Thank you for this extraordinary, humbling honor. To Rabbi Rick Jacobs, whose leadership of the movement inspires us. To Rabbi Leora Kay, our lifelong friend. To so many in the movement who do the holy work of service to our community, thank you. Thank you to my parents, Jane and John Fisher, who are here for their first biennial. They have been role models for me, <laughs> engaging with the Jewish community and the world community, striving to make life better for those less fortunate through their strong commitment to social justice. What an honor it is to be here today with the movement I love. Growing up, we called it UAHC, Union of, Hebrew American, of American Hebrew Congregations, but I've adapted to URJ, and that is fine. But I haven't adapted to calling NAFTI the nifty northern region. Sorry, I'll keep working on that. The threads of the tapestry of my life were woven in the reform movement. The movement gave me so much, including my husband, Daniel, who I met at Olin Sang Ruby Union Institute. So a big thank you to Jerry Kay for schlepping to Temple Israel way up north in Duluth, Minnesota, to convince my parents to send me to Asrui. <laughs> Temple Israel was my second home, and in preschool I met the one other Jewish person my age, my best friend, Anne Kainer Roth, Zichrona Livracha. Her memory is a blessing. She would have been so excited to be here today. She was a champion of human rights and a fierce fighter for justice for the LGBTQ community. She inspires me in all I do. <laughs> Together, Anne and I ran Dusty, Duluth Superior Temple Youth. There were five board members and five youth group members. Yes, the very same people. <laughs> we attended conclaves, so small congregations make a difference. We attended conclaves all over the Midwest and twice traveled to Washington, D.C. for NIFTI convention. My first trip to Israel was on a NIFTI and Israel trip, of course. And when I was 18 and arrived at Brandeis University, knowing no one, I wandered over to Reform Group on Friday night and was welcomed warmly by some of the people here in the room today. Rabbi Andy Vogel, Rabbi Melinda Pankin. Okay, I didn't call them rabbi back then. During my junior year of college, while studying in Israel, I attended a Jewish women's conference and attended a service at the Kotel, the Western Wall. Little did I know at that time that it was the very first Women of the Wall tefillah and the beginning of a 30-year quest for religious freedom at the Kotel. Thank you. Thank you to Anat Hoffman, Rabbi Noah Sata, Rabbi Gilad Kariv, and your whole team for all you do to fight for religious freedom in Israel. In my professional life, I stuck close to the movement also, teaching at the Rashi School, Boston's Reform Jewish Day School, as well as Temple Israel in Boston, Temple Shalom in Chevy Chase, Maryland. I was privileged to meet so many giants of our movement to whom we owe so much, Rabbi David Saperstein, Rabbi Gary Zola, Debbie Friedman, so many rabbis, cantors, educators, who are now friends and colleagues. We share the entire movement's deep, painful loss of Rabbi Aaron Pankin, Zichrono Livracha. We first knew Aaron as my college roommate Melinda's hilarious and kind older brother. Later, he became a friend and then a colleague with whom we partnered on efforts to strengthen the relationship between the American Jewish community and Israel and support progressive Judaism in Israel. He, too, carried on the spirit of Rabbi Schindler. So I stand before you as a product of this movement, full of gratitude for the gifts it has given me to see the full range of Jewish choices in modern life and for imbuing me with a sense of responsibility to do my part to repair the world. My introduction to the world of refugees began long ago. One snowy night, my parents, my sister and I, drove to the airport to meet a family of Vietnamese boat refugees. My parents tell me that I cried when I realized that they brought nothing with them besides the clothes they were wearing, not a single toy for their three children. Fast forward to my first year living in Israel when I met another refugee, a young Eritrean woman who had just arrived in Tel Aviv after being kidnapped from a refugee camp in Africa, trafficked through the Sinai Desert, where she was ransomed, tortured, and dumped at Israel's border. She rolled up her sleeves to show me the scars on her arms. 
Soon, my daughter and I began volunteering in a dingy childcare center and inviting others to join us in safety repair projects, food deliveries, and holding babies who were stuck in cribs for hours and hours at a time with no human contact. At the Consortium for Israel and Asylum Seekers, we provide humanitarian support, match volunteers and donors to organizations, and educate individuals and groups about asylum seekers and refugees in Israel. I invite you to visit and meet asylum seekers who fled genocide and persecution, seeking safety for themselves and their children. I invite you to meet our inspiring Israeli partners who share our values of strengthening the fabric of society and supporting the most vulnerable members of the community. As Jews, we are commanded to take care of the stranger among us no fewer than 36 times in the Torah. In our history, and for some of us very recent history, we were refugees ourselves. The global refugee crisis demands action from all of us, from every individual, every community, and every nation able to help. Thank you. Thank you for what the movement is doing, and thank you for this great honor. Julie and I are so moved and honored and humbled to be recognized by the URJ in the presence of friends and family with the Alexander M. Schindler Award for Service to World Jewry. Rabbi Schindler, as we all know, was a figure of immense moral standing, a leader with infinite love for the Jewish people, Israel, and our faith, a teacher who put before us our obligations to educate ourselves and our children about the richness of Torah, ritual, and the moral imperatives that Judaism invokes, and to use those lessons to make ourselves better Jews and to repair our broken world. His life and his example inspire us. And to be recognized by a movement led today by our dear friend Rabbi Rick Jacobs, a worthy successor to Rabbi Schindler, which was the bedrock of our Jewish lives, the ground from which we sprouted and grew, the home that nurtured and shaped our Jewish identities, is nothing short of pure joy. The Reform Movement appears again and again at the key touch points in both of our lives. Like Julie, I grew up in a small Midwestern town not far from here, Sinai Temple in Champaign, Illinois, under unique spiritual guidance of Rabbi Isaac Newman's Ichronoi Livracha was a place from which our family drew strength and were embraced by a community and built upon a foundational experience in our lives, spending the fall of 1973 in Israel and experiencing the Yom Kippur War. I thank my parents, Michael and Elizabeth Shapiro, who are here today, for so much, but especially for their decision to bring us to Israel and to remain there in a time of crisis. And there was no better place to deepen my love and knowledge of Judaism in Israel than Olin Sang Ruby Union Institute. Over 12 summers at Asrui, under the guidance of great educators like Jerry Kay, Etty Dolgen, Rabbi Mark Shapiro, Fran Perlman, and Rabbi Michael Weinberg, my understanding of the direction of my life took shape. And I can draw a straight line from my summer in the intensive Hebrew-speaking unit of Chalutzim in 1984 to my service as U.S. Ambassador to Israel. <laughs> Camp gave me something else, of course. It gave me Julie, a life partner who shares my commitment to Jewish life and to Israel, the beautiful family God blessed us with, our daughters Liat, Meirav, and Shira, who will become a bat mitzvah in Israel in two weeks, would simply not exist without us, Rui. I joined a reform movement trip to Israel during a gap year. After landing at Beit Shmuel in Jerusalem, we, live, we lived with Israeli families, studied Zionism, Jewish history, and Hebrew at the brand new HUC campus, traveled the length and breadth of the land, and spent several weeks on Kibbutz Yehel. Whether in Nifty, at Washu, Brandeis, or Harvard, at Hebrew University, or at HUC College Colloquia in Cincinnati, part of Rabbi Gary Zola's irrepressible efforts to recruit me to attend, attend rabbinical school. And don't give up, Gary, it might not be too late. <laughs> the people, institutions, and most of all, the ideas and values of the reform movement continue to play an outsized role in our lives. For it was through these experiences that I discovered my Zionism. A Zionism shaped first and foremost by Ahavat Yisrael, a love of the land and the people and recognizing what a precious gift is a sovereign Jewish state in our homeland after centuries of exile, wandering, and suffering. Which reminds me, no one, but no one, can tell us that we don't love Israel enough. A Zionism that meets Israelis where they are, 
tastes their culture and their politics, converses with them in Hebrew, understands the reality and burdens of their lives, like the threats Israel still faces from terrorists and from those who seek its destruction, a Zionism that celebrates and seeks to sustain the existence of, Jew of a Jewish and democratic state that envisions Israel at peace with all of its neighbors, that prioritizes ending the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in a two-state solution, even when it seems impossible, that speaks out against actions inconsistent with that goal, whether rejection of Israel's legitimacy as a Jewish state or unilateral annexation in the West Bank. A Zionism that believes that Israeli and Palestinian children, all created but Selim Elohim in the image of God, have the right to grow up without fear or terror or occupation. A Zionism that knows Israel bears responsibility for achieving these goals and that no less Palestinians and Arab states bear that responsibility. A Zionism that can, from a place of love, voice criticism and disagreement with Israeli policies and practices at odds with our values and that supports those fighting to protect Israel's Jewish and democratic future to ensure full inclusion of Israel's minorities or to guarantee recognition and respect for every form of Jewish practice and observance. These are the values that I took with me into government service. They informed my understanding of the U.S. interests with respect to Israel. And I was privileged to work for a president and administration who shared those commitments to Israel's legitimacy and the moral obligation for the United States to defend it when under attack, to ensuring Israel's ability to defend itself as we did in supporting the development of Iron Dome and a $38 billion MOU, among numerous other examples, to deepening the extraordinary partnership between our two nations and all its economic, technological, cultural, security, and people-to-people -people dimensions, and to a relentless effort to end the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in a two-state solution. For all of that, I will always be proud of my service in President Barack Obama's administration, where these values guided our work. As President Obama himself said at the 2011 biennial, you have brought to life your faith and your values, and the world is better for it. We are still living these values today, and I will do all I can to ensure that these are the values that animate U.S. policy when we restore sanity to our country when our next president takes office 13 months from now. In this week's Parsha, Vaishlach, Yaakov wrestles with a mysterious stranger. As they conclude their struggle, the stranger tells Yaakov that his name will now be Israel, because you have struggled with God and struggled with people and have prevailed. It is the struggle with God, with himself, to live a life worthy of his ancestors and his descendants, to continue the journey God has planned for him that makes Yaakov become Israel. Thank you for standing with us in our struggle and on our journey, and thank you for this tremendous honor.